Honorable Speaker, Your Excellency, our President, Honorable Ministers and Honorable Deputy Ministers, Honorable Members, I apologize, Madam Speaker. Dr. Njozi says that I was captivated. Maybe I was, you know, when his leader was speaking. This morning, I wish to add my voice to the many who congratulate our new president on taking office, believing that our nation has moved into a new era in which may begin to heal the serious wounds inflicted over the past eight years. The president has indeed given us hope for change and renewal. He has spelled out exactly what he's going to do in a way that everyone can understand. For that, we thank him. For your sonar speech, Your Excellency, as a statement of intent, I give you 10 out of 10. I welcome President Ramaphosa's election and I support the leadership of at this crucial juncture for South Africa needs certainty. Only certainty can bring stability and hope. Our president has the capacity to create certainty and that is what we ask him to do. For too long our country's leadership has vacillated on economic policy, hesitated to act on corruption and been reluctant to take the necessary steps to rescue South Africa. For too long, we have endured a president who pays lip service to fundamental issues, but whose words are meaningless. We pray that that is the past. But whether we like it or not, the National Development Plan will always be President Juma's legacy. One of the first and greatest tests for our president will be the issue of land. There is a wound among our people that has never been healed. We cannot deal with inequality until we resolve the issue of land, for land is the means to create security, development and wealth. We knew this during the apartheid era when the KwaZulu government sought to protect the few bits and pieces which were left to the kingdom after colonial congress and racial dispossession. We did this by passing the Ngonyama Trust Act through the KwaZulu Legislative Assembly so that land in traditional areas could continue to be administered according to indigenous and customary law. After 1994, when the, I'm, I'm sorry, Madam, Madam Speaker, I apologize. This was not a secret deal, as some people alleged. There was no need for any so-called conscious deal to draw the eye into the election, as they say. For President de Klerk and President Mandela and I had already signed the solemn agreement that enabled the IFE to go into the elections. The promise had already been made that international mediation would follow elections to resolve the outstanding issues of negotiations. Ultimately, that promise too, Your Excellency, was broken. But it has already been made when Ngonyama Trust was passed, it was already made. After 1994, when the land remained in trust, instead of automatically transferring the land to the state, the ruling party, the ANC, demanded that the act be revisited. So it was brought into this chamber. It was debated, it was argued about, and torn to pieces. In 1997, it was finally amended by this parliament to the full satisfaction of the ruling party. Indeed, the Honorable Zueli, Dr. Zuelim Kize declared as our premier, and I quote him verbatim, he said, the amended act makes it possible for this province to move ahead with the program of development. As we have agreed on the proposition that all land belongs to the king, it should not appear to be only said by word of mouth. Your Excellency, what has changed? What does this ruling party see now that it didn't see before? Why has the Ngonyama Trust Act suddenly become the enemy number one? Why is the ANC determined to take the land away from our king, away from the custodianship of Amakosi, and away from traditional communities? The king doesn't even own it, he's merely a trustee. This parliament created the trust board during the amendment in 97, and they created the trust board and the, the chairperson of the trust is none other than judge, the judge of the High Court, 
Mr. Justice Jerome Nguyenye. And the Constitution recognized the institution of traditional leadership. But what does it mean? If the role and powers and functions of traditional leaders are continually being stripped away. 18 years ago, a cabinet set up by the President of the Republic, Mr. Mbegi, led by the then Deputy President, the Honorable Mr. Jacob Zuma, was promised traditional leaders that Chapter 7 and Chapter 12 of the Constitution would be amended if the creation of municipalities diminished the role, powers, and functions of traditional leadership. That promise, Your Excellency, was never fulfilled. Instead, through successive pieces of legislation and endless empty words, traditional leaders have been reduced to mere ceremonial figures. The only time they seem to matter is when an election looms. Is this how a black leadership treats its own people? Does the ruling party sincerely believe that bureaucrats in plush offices can administer traditional land better than those who have been the custodians of our people's lives, dignity, and well-being since the time immemorial? Surely the policy of land expropriation without compensation, which necessitates the amendment of our constitution, should not be used against the poorest of the poor. When the ANC first spoke about expropriation without compensation, Amakosi never expected that the first land to be taken would be the very land that we place in the hands of the people. Corruption is not just about stealing money, Your Excellency. It's about abusing power. Now, let us hear we certain that there will be no more abuse of power. That will be the beginning of a new administration. One is, hey, this is, no, uh, this is a zero tolerance. There's no zero tolerance for corruption. I've often said, Your Excellency, that corruption is, is not part of the cause of governance. It is possible to run a clean administration as I did I, when I administered the government for 19 years. Having taken up the leadership at the behest of my leaders, in course Albert Tutuli and Mr. Oliver Tam. Over the course of 19 years, never once was a single allegation of corruption ever leveled at my administration. The fact that not a single MP can travel between Cape Town and Durban at on our national airlines, Your Excellency, should tell us that things have gone too far. The multi-million multi -million rand bailouts that were standard practice even when I was in the cabinet cannot be allowed to continue. The rot has to stop, and this is to stop right now. Like many South Africans, I, I hope that things are indeed about to change with the accession to power. The door that was firmly closed during Mrs. Zuma's presidency may well be open again. Indeed, the long ignored work of reconciliation might even creep. The issue of land is an emotional issue. It took a force larger than that which the British used to conquer the India, to conquer the Zulu people. The Anglo Zulu War of 1979 was a full scale war meant to take away our kingdom from my great grandfather, King Kajoy Ogambandi. The king was a prisoner here in, in the castle in Cape Town. The king's regiments were under the command of my paternal great-grandfather, Nyaman Abteles, the king's prime minister. My grandfather, Mkandum Abteles, participated at the San Juana routing of the British force on the 22nd of January 1879. King Kajar was imprisoned here. He was exiled. He was a fugitive. He died. He is buried in the forest in Kandla. Can you imagine if my uncle and my uncle, Dr. Pixigai Sagasem, the founder of the, of the longest existing political movement in Africa, if he were to rise from his grave, would he approve of this dispossession of blacks by blacks? If he calls Albert Kutuli, a traditional leader, and my mentor, were to rise from his grave, would he approve? This, Your Excellency, what is on playing with fire? We do not need to create this kind of provocation against ourselves. We have too many bigger issues. So I, I hope that the, we are all weird by your accession, because there is hope, as you said, for renewal. And the president is right to remind us that it is hope and hope alone that has sustained us in the long, dark tunnel. But this hope will need to be tested and proven, of course. Finally, I've always said, for as long as the president does what is good for South Africa, the IFE will support the president. I thank you, sir.